Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last weekend, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft flew past the Earth on its way back from the asteroid Ryugu. While it did this, it dropped off a sample return capsule which screamed through the atmosphere and landed in the Australian outback. That sample canister contained samples from the asteroid Ryugu, which of course are now being dissected by Japanese scientists to figure out what it can tell us about the early solar system. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about this photograph which was taken by a telescope showing the spacecraft and the sample return canister when they were about 160,000 kilometers from the Earth. That is about 100,000 miles for those who speak Imperial. It's 40% of the distance from the Earth to the Moon. And that capsule which is imaged, it's 40 centimeters across. It's about that size, 16 inches. It's really tiny and yet with the telescope set up correctly, it can be imaged and tracked in space if you know where to look and where it's moving. Now, the same weekend, Chang'e 5 was on the surface of the moon and it was performing its sampling of the surface. And the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter flew over it and was able to take this picture showing the spacecraft on the surface of the moon casting a shadow. So now, you might say, well, wait a second, if we can photograph a 40 centimeter spacecraft, you know, at 40% of the distance to the moon, surely we can see a 100 centimeter spacecraft at 100% of the distance to the moon, right? Well, you could, but you couldn't see it if it was on the moon. And so this is a question I asked, why can't you see spacecraft on the moon using telescopes on Earth? And to understand how this is, or why this is, you have to kind of understand what's really happening with telescope imaging. So, when you're trying to take a photograph of something against a dark background, what you're really looking for is a point of light. You want to condense all your photons into one area. So if you know there's a spacecraft out there, you set your telescope to track that spacecraft for long enough that you get enough photons in that area that it lights up your pixel. The telescope, of course, is like a big collector mirror and then some other focusing mirrors and then there's a sensor and the sensor has like pixels which convert the amount of light into an electrical signal which can be converted to an image. Now, notice that what I'm saying is the object doesn't matter how big the object is, right? It doesn't matter whether the thing is the same size as the pixels or vastly smaller than the pixels. What matters is that it puts out enough light. And actually, if you do the math, that sample return capsule is smaller than some stars that we can see in our night sky with the naked eye. Stars are inherently smaller than the number of pixels, you know, and we can see them, right? Because they put out enough light. Now, because we're looking against a dark background, that's fine. But when you then switch over to try to look for a, an object on the surface of the moon, well, now the entire moon is bright. Sure, the surface of the moon is kind of made of very dark rocks. It's like a black basalt. But that is way more brightness than the darkness of deep space, right? It, space is black, none more black, if I'm going to paraphrase Spinal Tap. So if you take something like the Hubble Space Telescope and you figure out its angular resolution, I think on paper it says 0.04 arc seconds. Well, the moon is about 1800 arc seconds across as viewed from Earth. So it turns out that that is a pixel on the Hubble Space Telescope at the best resolution corresponds to a patch 80 meters by 80 meters wide. So even big spacecraft are only going to be a tiny fraction of that pixel. So if you're looking for a bright patch, it's being completely washed out. If you knew where to look, you might be able to you know, analyze the image, take enough photons to say that statistically this one patch with the spacecraft on the surface is slightly brighter and then conclude that maybe that's where a spacecraft is. But that is not a very compelling argument. Whereas in deep space, you've got an object, you know where it is, you know what you're looking for, you're taking these photos and you're seeing a bright patch in roughly the right place. You can say with some certainty that that is the spacecraft you're looking for. Now, sometimes you're not sure exactly where they are. And 
One case actually that's interesting is the Apollo missions. When Apollo was flying to the moon, we had the command module and the land, the lander, the lunar lander, and people were imaging these from the planet Earth. They were the amateurs were setting up their telescopes, knowing roughly where they were, and they were taking photographs, you know, using 50-year-old technology. But when Apollo 13 happened, the spacecraft was on the way back to Earth and it was performing manoeuvres using the information they had, but they wanted to actually get observers on the ground to take photographs and make sure that the place they thought it was matched the place that it was. And it turned out that um, the Chabot Observatory, which is in Oakland, very near me, I used to go there all the time, they uh, were one of the places that were able to get an image of Apollo 13 and confirm that it was in fact on course and wasn't going to skip off the atmosphere. So again, it's all about being able to photograph against a dark background. So now, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, it doesn't have the massive 2.4 meter telescope that uh, Hubble is. It has an 8 inch, 20 centimeter telescope but it is 50 kilometers from the target rather than 400,000 kilometers from the target. And so it's got a resolution of about two arc seconds, which turns out to be about 50 centimeters. So it is able to not just resolve the differences in brightness for the object, it's actually able to have different patches of the or object in different pixels. So it goes from being able to see one bright spot to be able to see bright spots and dark spots where it's shaded. The reason we can recognize these objects on the moon is because they cast shadows, they have bright patches. We can see the tracks that lunar rovers left in some of the uh, Apollo sites. We can actually see, I think in some cases, tracks of the astronauts that were disturbed the surface of the moon. That's the level of resolution that the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter gives us. So it is pretty marvelous. Yeah, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has made a point of going and imaging all the human sites on the Moon. And this means like the Apollo sites, obviously, but you've all, you've got Surveyor, Luna, Chang'e, we got 3, 4 and 5 now. You have the impact site of uh, the Vikram lander from Chandrayaan-2 and the impact site of Bereshit. Um, also, they have impact craters which were formed on the moon by the upper stage of the Saturn V, which was intentionally slammed into the moon to generate uh, you know, seismic activity for sensors that had been left on previous missions. It's pretty marvelous that you can go in and see these things that have been modified by human technology in this otherwise desolate wilderness of a world. So yeah, people have been photographing spacecraft in space for a very long time. Uh, and there's another interesting story that came up recently for an object called 2020 SO. So 2020 SO was originally discovered by the Pan Stars Telescope, which is an automated telescope in Hawaii, which is looking for spacecraft, or sorry, looking for asteroids, <laughs> pardon me. Um, and it found, you know, an object in a near Earth orbit. And they thought, well, that's very interesting. It's moving very slowly you know, much more slowly than most asteroids would. So they track it uh, and they realize it's going to come in very close to the planet Earth and actually get a gravity assist from the moon that will slow it down. It'll actually slow it and capture it into an orbit for a few months before getting kicked back off into space. People began to suspect that this might actually be an old rocket booster. And so astronomers began taking spectra off it where they look at how different colored light reflects. And they observed that the spectra on this object was very close to that of another rocket booster which had been sitting out in Earth orbit for the last 40 years. So by plotting the orbit backwards, they've concluded that this object, which was originally thought to be an asteroid, is in fact the Centaur booster upper stage from the Surveyor 2 mission which tried to go to the moon. So that is pretty darn amazing. Also, I get sent this image or this video sequence showing the light curve. That is the rotation of the object. Uh, and we can't, again, this object is too small to resolve in any detail, but what we can see is that the brightness changes over time. And it looks like it peaks twice every nine and a half seconds. So the whole thing is rotating end over end and twice 
every uh, rotation period, it comes edge on and reflects the maximum amount of light towards the, the target. So yeah, this is believed to be an old centaur stage. And, and that's kind of amazing that we can see these old objects in space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank you.